better stay out of my way. <laughs> I could drive over the Jeep. Good luck, Tonky. <laughs> It's nice knowing you. Aye, it's um, what we're going to do is the first thing we have to do is select forward. So what we're going to do is, this tractor has the handbrake on, so we don't need to worry. I want you to press this orange button in and push that forward. It won't go anywhere. Are you sure? Trust me. Because there's a boy in front of us. He's alright, don't worry about him. Mm. He's well insured. <laughs> It's only started a couple of weeks. We can lose him. <laughs> There's a good digger over here. <laughs> Should you seen him earlier? <laughs> you thought you were going to end up oh, in the... Goodness. <laughs> okay, where, what button do you want me to put? That's that button, here. but you have to push the whole stick forward at the same time. Okay. Right, and back into the middle. It won't do anything. So what you have done is... You have told the tractor you want to go forward. Still won't do anything. So here's your handbrake. Mm -hmm. I have the handbrake off. So, see that we are all pointing yes. forward? Yes. That means you're in forward. Uh -huh. You're ready to go forward. So, what you have to do now is just ease that forward. Um, Push that forward easy. One and I don't need to touch nope. anything, right? Don't need any pedals. Okay. Just ease it forward. Just Does he it? know that I'm going forward? Doesn't matter, he'll be all right. <laughs> Sorry, no, please, no, don't, don't. Right, pull it back, just right. to practice. Okay. See the way you've stopped? Yes. Push it forward nice and easy. Just so to stop, all I have to do is pull it back. Pull it back, and uh -huh. if you need to stop faster, go for the brakes. You're on her now. Now. Now, do I have to keep this up, hold my hand here for the speed? No, you can let go now. Once you're in that speed, you could let go, but you have to put your hand down to go faster and push okay, it forward. Okay, okay. Or... So do you think I should go faster? Oh, I would be flat out up there. You sure? Oh. Now, there's an wee button you must press before we go onto the road. What's you that? See that the wee beacon button at the top there of those no. lights? Uh-huh, uh uh-huh. Can you reach that? Uh -huh. There that's you go. The, that's the beacons on. We're telling the whole world. <laughs> We're telling the whole world. Watch out. Watch out. There's, There's a mad woman on the road. There's a wee short woman controlling a big tractor. As the boy says, give it, tell her. Okay. Uh, you let me know if I'm going too fast. Oh, no, no, no. Go as hard as you're comfortable with. Hi. That's you. That's the speed I've you set at initially. Is it? Oh, I'm up there. Great stuff. Oh. Anyway, tell me what's in the cab, because I am in control of about 100,000, so yeah. inside here must be really modern. What's in this tractor? So this is a... This tractor has a, an engine producing about 185 horsepower. Right. And um, it's got... Uh, you've got a constantly variable transmission. Uh -huh. And what that means is you've actually no gears. It's all progressive as to how you push that lever. Right. On that Cebus lever that's in this particular tractor. That's the one I'm pushing you, up and down. You can program absolutely everything into that so to make your life easier. So really, if you're doing a job in the field, your hand would probably never have to come off that that lever. That's mm -hmm. why I've got you doing it. You've all these different Because programs. I haven't once used the brake or the clutch no, or, or, any, or, or anything. Or, or the foot throttle. No. As such, you don't it's have to. It all seems to be controlled by you the can. hand. No, you can use. You can push the foot throttle and this tractor. You, you can put it into whatever mode you're comfortable mm -hmm. with. But that's what we've got here. And then obviously, um, this tractor, what we're sitting on, so there's a front suspension, you can actually see, if you look down the side of the tractor, you'll see the, the tractor bobbling about like this. So it's yeah. quite comfortable. Yes, it is. It's like, and as you said, there was an air seat there, so and we're sitting I'm up, bobbing about all right. We're sitting up on big springs in this cab, so a lot of effort has went into these tractors over the years to get them a little bit more, you know, a lot more comfortable. Certainly mm -hmm. the old ones aren't like that. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? But. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it is really comfortable, and I know another thing, it's really warm. Have, have we got air conditioning in here? Everything in this <laughs> tractor. Everything in this tractor. So, you have air conditioning, you also have a, like, your heaters, you have front linkage, front PTO, so you can do work with the front of the tractor, the back of the tractor. I know it sounds like I'm, uh, uh, we're dialing it down here, but mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what you can do. Mm -hmm. And, um, like, and you, have you had any issues so far driving? 
Well, you happy? I hate to, with no wood to touch now, whenever you say that. Oh, we can touch the top no, of mine, I've yeah. Had, I've had no issues. This has been really, really comfortable. Um, really surprised by how, you know, modern and everything it is inside. How many people would own a tractor like this in Northern Ireland? Oh, well, well I would say most, um, most of your, I'll call it, average to large farmers would have at least one tractor of this sort of size stroke caliber now it's not something they maybe change every year they maybe just wouldn't have one but within the next two to three years they'll have you know the way there's always one buying oh yes. i would say the majority of your bigger contractors would have several of these style of tractors mm -hmm. and then i would say some of your smaller farmers maybe just wouldn't have this size of one but mm -hmm. they may have one like it with mm -hmm. all the same technology, yeah. only a little bit smaller, yeah. you can set your speeds and do everything. Mm -hmm. This tractor here also inside the cab and up on the roof has its uh, GPS system, so we can set up, um, there's a big screen there having it switched on, but we can set up in a field. Once we go up and down the field or around the outside of the field, we tell it that we're doing a certain width of a job, say we're mowing, it will then take over the steering, you won't need to touch the steering. Right. It'll know exactly where to go in that field. Light her up. Foot right to the floor. Oh. Go on. Don't worry about him. Just hit him. Tell him. Oh. Right down. Right down. Right down. Right down. Check the side right over. Right down. This is the best bit of road we have. Go on. Go on. Right down. <laughs> Keep her going. Oh. Keep her going. <laughs> we're not. Oh. We're, we're still not flat out. <laughs> oh. Woo. So that's actually quite fast. Oh, fun. the sweat's blinding me. <laughs> oh, the sweat's not the time of life yet. <laughs> oh. So tell me this, Dougie, why should a farmer invest in a bit of machinery like this? Well, look, there's lots of different reasons, and um, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Some guys invest in nice machines because a farming is a, is a job, it can be quite a lonely job, and they're in the yard all the time, and it's like, Whenever I was a salesman and you always had a good car, you always had a good car, that's your office, that's where you spend so much time in. Mm. So a lot of guys just want something that's comfortable. And I would that say they that they enjoy driving. That's one reason. The second reason is tractors now, there's there are a lot as as technologies has moved along, they're they're more fuel efficient. They're probably cost less in the long run when you get into the amount of diesel usage, etc. 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 Having said that, it's a big investment. I suppose, Donkey, with everything, this here makes, as you say, life a wee bit easier for a farmer. Um, but it's a big investment. It's an it awful really lot. is. It's an awful lot of money now, and I would be the first person to do, you know, coming, coming with my background, and if I'm switching on serious donkey hat mode now, coming with my background and, and, and looking at economics and stuff, I know it's extremely hard to justify, but there's something that I have, Nicola, that a lot mm. of people have and it's called SMD, and it's very contagious, uh -huh. it's a problem. What's SMD? Shiny metal disease. I don't know where these boys are going. Down here, you're going down oh, after. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, right. SMD is shiny metal disease, and we are addicted to tractors, and addicted to big diesel engines, and addicted to all these things. I mean, we even buy old tractors, as I was showing you in the shed there, and, and we do them up, it, it's just, it, it's a bit of an issue and, and farmers, <laughs> not all of them, I mean, you get some livestock farmers who don't worry so much about machinery, a tractor's just something to feed mm -hmm. the cows with. Mm -hmm. Then you get some livestock because they're more worried about their cows and mm -hmm. their and, and all that there. And, and I don't know, I'm not, Libby's maybe a good example of uh -huh. someone like that, she just, is livestock mad? Yeah. We all know that. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm the opposite end of the scale. I, I would <laughs> I, I would farm away and any money I got, I would probably put it in the machinery because I love it. Yeah. Um, you know, if something goes wrong with them as regards their electrics or their computer or something like that there. Ach, look, yes and no. Um, we're in a world now where these modern tractors, it's no longer uh, the local man down the road who pulls out the spanners and fixes them. And, Something happens, some of these tractors, it's a it's a dealer visit, it's a laptop, I know a laptop required to plug in and tell you exactly what's wrong with the tractor. Yes, that's big money, they are moving towards that, but technically 
you know, a lot of guys buying new tractors like this here would have good warranty packages on them and stuff now. And but you are 100 percent right. Like some of the like the, the next tractor that I'm making you drive. If anything happened that tractor, can we just say you're making me drive it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the next tractor I'm making you drive is uh, as an example of a tractor. If something happened that I would tackle fixing it myself. Whereas right. if something happened this, I would be afraid. Now that would cost a lot of money, but technically. They're not meant to give much trouble, but damn, that could start a whole, whole other issue. Yeah, you have created like a a huge empire based on people tuning in, YouTube coming to see you, loving your machinery, love the way you talk about the machineries, going into the insides. It's it's just it just exploded really, hasn't it? Okay, it people it, really do love to see what's out there as regards machinery. It has, it has, Nick. I think the. The secret, uh, it's very hard for me to describe, but I think the secret to the success of the Grass Men brand is, has to be down to the sheer enthusiasm and passion we have for it. I'm a great believer that no matter what you put your mind to, you can achieve it. And uh, I grew up around farms and um, never had a farm to go to. And I went off to uni and I did my agricultural economics and management and I did that sort of a degree. and. I worked in the industry as a salesman and I thoroughly loved it and I went away off at nights working. But the opportunity came to start something and I did it as a hobby. And the hobby very quickly grew because what I realized was, if you enjoy doing something and you practice at it and you get good at it, other people will enjoy it too. And that's my honest belief. And what we're doing is living the dream. I mean, we were in America this year um, looking at uh, you know a lot of local people from when I say local when you're in America I mean from all over the UK and Ireland out there working traveling the whole of the USA seeing rural America in a different sort of a light we've been to Germany we've been to all over Europe pretty own and we absolutely you know what do you think why do you think people love tuning in to watch what you do you know you're taking these big tractors out showing them the insides of them talking about what they're capable of what is the the fascination is it the same kind of fascination that people have with cars probably yes um like you said yourself earlier your husband's mad about motorbikes mm -hmm. so take your husband out of the equation and, and, and replace him with a farmer or a young fella he's mad about tractors yeah well <laughs> it's it's the same sort of a thing and whenever i work with tractors and lorries every time i go through a town the buggy, the palm, the child was always looking up at you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just something. We like machines, diggers, tractors. <laughs> well, I'm flying now, don't I? I tell you. I tell you. Uh, we must be late for a date. <laughs> Christmas is coming, doggy. Christmas is coming. I know. Just people just love it. And I love being the person that, you know, can help. And we've done a lot of work over the years to try and promote the brand. And uh, I don't know. It, it's mostly been organic growth I have to say. Mm -hmm. Well we're driving back down in here. Yeah. You've taken me a burl around the roads on this fabulous machine. Um, tell me this donkey, would you hire me? I, I would. I would. <laughs> if nothing else you would be good if nothing else you'd be good for the PR of the company. <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're saying ten out of ten for PR, one out of ten for the driving maybe. But what I am gonna do now is I'm gonna give you one of the smaller tractors. You're going to drive it on your own. You just drive about the yard or up the road a bit to your comfortable. But is this the one that I have to do everything myself? Yeah, you'll have to do everything yourself. Okay. Clutch, and change, and, and are, you, are you coming in with me again, no. Donkey? No, I'm leaving you on your own. Are you sure one. that this is a good idea? That's what I'm going to do because I want you to understand that not every farmer has to have the big modern tractor like this. And some people like myself would have as much pride in that little old tractor. This tractor's 30 years old that I'm mm -hmm. putting you in. It's a very special tractor to my heart. I, it's actually dubbed my son's tractor because it's the identical to the first tractor I would ever have sat in beside my daddy on a way back in the day. My daddy did used to drive for his uh, brother-in-laws and stuff. So I, I got a hold of one and um, restored it, took the cab off, put a lot of patches on any wee places that the, the rot was starting to get mm -hmm. into the steel. So we fully restored it, put a new set of tires on it and uh, Basically, if my wee man was here, he, looks, he would tell you that was that was his tractor. And if I do anything to it, he would kill me. So tell me one wee thing before you go for my benefit. Yes, now. go. 
we've been helping you a little bit over the last couple of months with your new program uh, called Farm, Farm Farming and Ma Matters. Farm and Matters. Gin in, so, Tuesday night, 6 to 7. I'm going to give you 40 seconds to prove to me how good your PR is. Oh, no! Oh, <laughs> Farming no. Matters, describe it. Describe what oh. you're trying to do. Because it's been in Radio Ulster, but if you ha are a fan of Grassmen, you can tune in anywhere because you can go online and watch mm -hmm. it. So describe it. Well, Farming Matters is a programme that I really devised in my head about four years ago. As you know, these things mm -hmm. take a long time to come to fruition. Um, so it is about the rural community, it's about the farming community, it's about issues that happen outside the city. I wanted to bring a flavour of what was going on and the farms and the villages and the rural communities, bring it to the radio and let other people listen to what's going on. A mm -hmm. lot of the time, radio focuses on very much city issues, as you know. Yep, absolutely. Um, and you, you kind of get lost as to what else is going on outside the city limits. So I want to bring the sights, the sounds, the smells, the feel, the people, the voices, the accents, everything that goes on to uh, in the rural areas to BBC Radio Ulster. And you're just part of it because, you know, we, we, we don't only want to do just farming issues, you know. I'm sure people sitting out there go farming matters what we'll be doing with cows and shaving sheep. We want to bring everything in that. Has your, has your community got an issue that say with no services in it mm -hmm. and you're living in a rural area? Well, tune into Farming Matters, you just might hear a wee bit about that. It's going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Right. <clears throat> okay. So. Ooh. Oh. This is not good. Ooh. Where am I going? I'm just going to follow him. Because I'm in second. I'm just going to keep talking to myself. Maybe I should go down into first. Let me sit. No, no, I'm doing all right. Doing all right. Doing all right. Keeping her lit. Keeping her lit. End of the yard. Maybe go down a gear. Ugh. Go down into first. We're down into first. Now, I just have to remember how to stop. I'll take her into second. I'll take her into second. Maybe not. Oh, sugar. Oh, that was a good big gear there. Look. I'm going to park her up. Handbrake on. Is that me? Can I lift my leg off, can I? That's your handbrake. Oh, is that it? What's that? PTO. What's that? Oh, sorry. Are you happy? Are you in the middle over there? In the middle, in That's the you. middle. You can yep. lift your foot off. How did I? Very well. Did it? Is that not? Now, did you not almost enjoy that more? I actually prefer this to the, <laughs> the big I do, I really do. <laughs> what do you so see? all I can say is farmers, don't waste your money. Can you see yeah, the here. love for the old ones? Oh, I can, I can. I mean, this, it just felt easier driving this. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to sort of the manual in the car. <laughs> I, think I, I think I was more in control. So that's what I'm saying. Don't buy those big machines. Save your money. Save your money. Save your money. Buy a wee one. Buy a wee one. <laughs> <laughs>